Hey guys, it's Matt Holland here. I got a comment on one of my videos this week asking about my drum sound and uh, basically the production methods I use to get it. So in this video I'll be taking through a few basic tips and tricks as to how to get my drum sound. And I'll look at bass and I'll look at guitars in later videos and I'm going to do a special video about my guitar tones and I will also be releasing a set of Line 6 Pod Farm presets for the Metal Shop and for the Standard Pack at some point. And that will have clean tones, distortions, overdrives, sort of everything, a bit of everything. Uh, but for now, we'll just be looking at the drums. So uh, let me just play you the track we'll be working with today. It's not particularly flashy on anything. It's just a quick test to demonstrate the new mix and uh, has a bit of everything in it. So here it goes. So there it is, it's nothing particularly special, but um, now let's just listen to the drums by themselves. So we'll mute everything else. I'll only play half of it, but this is just what the drums sound like on their own. Okay, um, I'm going to start with the most important thing to getting a good drum sound with any programming is velocity. And uh, if you look at this here, you can see the different colours, they mean different velocities. And a lot of videos I hear using Superior Drummer and Easy Drummer and Drum Kit from Hell especially, people often leave the velocities as they come, which is usually this yellow colour. And that, you know, metal drummers like to hit things hard, that's a fact. And if you have everything on the middle velocity, it sounds like they're a bit limp-wristed. So make sure you adjust velocities and make it, you know, give it some dynamics, change things around a bit. I don't have every single one at 127, but I keep them around that mark just to give it some intensity and a bit of rawness to the sound. Okay, that's the first bit. That's just a bit of MIDI. And uh, let's get the mixer back up. I'll show you what I'm doing to each track. Okay, I'm using the multi-output version of Superior Drummer just as it gives more scope for individually editing each part of the drum kit. We'll start with the bass drum which is just the first track. And I have a brilliant effect called PSP Vintage Warmer on here. It's sort of a compressor and a limiter and you can also apply a tape sort of sound to it and uh, really crunchy overdrive. It's quite fun to play around on guitars with. And I'm using the multiband compressor slash limiter heavy setting, which really brings out a sort of thud to the bass drum. Let's just solo that and listen to that by itself. So there's quite a sort of deep, yet still fairly focused sound to that. I'm using channel EQ, and I honestly can't tell you what I've done here. It's just me dicking around with it until it sounded how I wanted it to sound. It's still not a finished product, so it's definitely going to change a few times before I finish it. And I've got sub bass on here, and I've it's basically as it comes, but I've increased the wet signal slightly and widened the bandwidth. It just adds something beneath the kick, which uh, fills out that space in the mix. I drop off the really low frequencies on the EQ as they sound slightly muddy, but this just uh, leaves the dry signal completely as it is and adds something else rather than detracting from the whole sound. Okay, that's the kick drum. 
and the snare drum, what I'm using for the snare drum within Superior Drummer is the Black Beauty, which is the one it loads with, but in my opinion it's the best sounding drum. Uh, I'll probably upgrade to Metal Foundry soon, but for now I can't really fault 2.0 and it sounds, so I'll probably stick with it. I'd rather buy things like an Axe FX first, but here's my snare sound. And there's quite a lot of reverb on that, and the reason for that is Superior Drummer has a very distinctive sound to it. It's a good sound, but it's a very dry sound, and it plagues a lot of one-man band and a lot of sort of bedroom recording artist songs. So uh, I have been trying recently to get my drums to sound less like Superior Drummer and more like something that isn't Superior Drummer, if you get my drift. And uh, auxiliary track one is my snare drum track, so let's just solo that for a second and get rid of the overheads. So there's a lot of treble and a lot of bite on that sound, and I think that's quite important, really. There's still the mid definition, there's still quite a bit of thump to it, but the guitars provide a lot of the middle in this track, and you really want the crack of the snare to be audible over everything else. I don't have an EQ, but I'm using a touch of Exciter. Switch to Color 2 because it just sounds a bit cleaner. And I've got the 10.6% of the harmonics around the 200 hertz frequency, which just adds a bit more definition to the high end of the, uh, the attack. Uh, on the compressor front, I'm literally just using it as a volume boost. I'm not doing anything with it. I use the platinum circuit and then leave everything else as it is. And uh, I have the Space Designer reverb here as well, which I use on the Bright Chamber, which can be found under the Medium Room settings, except I boost the dry signal to maximum, once again, just to add a bit more intensity and definition to the track. Uh, Aux 2, that's the hi-hats, I haven't done anything to that because most of that is dealt with within the overhead and the ambient mic. Track 3 is the compression on the tongs, which once again is minimal, it's just to bring them up in the mix so they can be heard over everything else. And uh, Aux 4, that's the overhead, let's solo that for a second. Now, if you listen to my earlier videos, I used to take out most of the bleed with the kicks going into the overheads and the snare. I recently begun to put that back in because I've realized if you're recording a real drum kit and if that's the sound you're going to, there's going to be a lot of bleed between the microphones. Also, it adds a sort of another layer of depth to the mix and makes things sound a little more organic. And uh, let's just listen to the ambient for a second as well. And um, what I've done with this, with these two tracks is I have the same reverb as I've got on the snare. My philosophy on this is if you listen to a lot of bands, I'll have a huge verb on the snare and a completely dry sound on the rest of the kit. It sounds like the kick and the toms and the cymbals have been recorded in one room and then somebody's taken the snare to a basketball court or something. So I like to apply a similar reverb to everything. I don't put it on the kick because that makes it sound muddy. But the reverb on the ambient and the overhead brings a sort of slight tail to the kick. So it sort of balances out and makes it sound more like one instrument, yet yeah, with separate defined layers in it. So now, once again, let's just listen to the whole drum set together. And uh, I'm trying to keep the tracks and the output, this track, uh, the effects and the output of this track quite minimal. I've got a compressor, just slightly boosting the level of the track just to make it slightly louder. But I'm trying to get get away from that sort of squished sound that you hear a lot nowadays. The guitars, I recorded them on fairly crappy headphones, so I've just gone back in EQ and added a bit of low end as I overcompensated the treble and made them sound overly bright. 
the bass, the tuner I use to tune the bass, surprisingly enough. Uh, the bass amp is, in my eyes, better for recording bass DI than the Line 6 plugin that I use for guitars, so I just use that. I use the new American Bright model, and uh, I boost the bass and the trebles and just leave everything else. Uh, I've got sub bass on that again, as it helps it to lock in with the kick drum slightly, and I've got a compressor also running on there, which is just compressing it. It's the bass hard compressor, what more can you say? It's one of the Logic presets, which does its job, sounds very good. Uh, I've very kindly been led by a good friend of mine, a five string open this sound gear bass, which I've currently been using in my recordings, and it's helping me to sound a lot more professional as it makes the mix sound full. These two tracks here with all the effects on them, uh, those are the clean guitars that you hear at the beginning. So I will solo those now and show you what they are. And it's the uh, same chord played over two octaves and uh, they've got the same guitar amp pro setting. I couldn't be bothered to make a Line 6 preset for that. They've both got a delay designer and one's got a reverse reverb in space designer and the other one's just got a normal one but it's quite an extended one. It's the conservatory plus setting which is quite a good one. I was looking at doing surround for this but then I realised I didn't have a surround set up so that would have been a waste of CPU. But no, that's about it for this tutorial. If you've got any more questions about how to master drums, how to mix tracks, don't, uh, feel free to ask, send me a message or post a comment. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up. And you know, if you want any other tutorials or if you're a band or an artist and you want any tracks mixed or mastered for you, if you send me the raw tracks, I'll do the work for you and send it back. I don't charge yet. But um, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos coming up this week. All right.